In Part A we are told that the magnetic field is directed perpendicular to the plane of the circular loop. So we have drawn a circular loop and then we have drawn magnetic field lines passing through the loop in a manner that makes them perpendicular to the plane of the loop. And we are asked to determine the strength of the magnetic field based on a given magnetic flux as well as a radius. So, of course, we need a relationship between the radius, the magnetic flux, which is symbolized by this Greek letter, and then the magnetic field, which is symbolized by B. Of course, such a relationship exists. We have it right over here. We have the magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field multiplied by the area of the loop and then multiplied by an angle. Let's talk about that angle for just a moment. It's important to understand that the angle will be between the magnetic field, which we have drawn pointing to the right in this picture, and a direction perpendicular to the plane of the loop. Basically, when they say a direction perpendicular to the plane of the loop, what you're going to do is draw an imaginary line that passes right through the center of the loop, such as this. Now, hopefully we can see that the angle between the magnetic field lines symbolized in the green vector and that imaginary line that passes through the center of the loop, that angle between those two is zero degrees. So we must make sure that we say theta equals zero degrees in this problem. So let's write down the formula and then what we'll do is solve the formula for the quantity asked for in part A, which is again the strength of the magnetic field, so we're solving for B. What we would do then is divide both sides of the equation by A cosine theta. The A cosine theta term will cancel out on the right hand side, and then we have the magnetic flux divided by the area times the cosine of the angle. This will give us the expression for the magnetic field strength. Now, this is a circular loop, of course, so it is important next to understand that for area, we would use the area of a circle. We all know that the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So we'll rewrite this one more time and substitute pi times radius squared for the area. We are now ready to plug in the known values. We have the, again, magnetic flux value right here, the radius, and then we determined the angle as well. So let's plug these values into our equation. So here are the known values plugged in. One thing to note is that for the radius, it was given in centimeters. The radius was 12 centimeters. We need to convert that into the standard unit of meters. So we multiplied that by 10 to the minus 2. Also, don't forget to square your radius. So with those things in mind, we punch this into our calculators. And when we do so, we get a magnetic field strength of approximately 0.177. And the unit here will be in Tesla because the meters squared in the numerator and the meters squared in the denominator will cancel out. So give, this value gives us the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked to find the magnetic flux. So this time we're looking for the magnetic flux, and in addition, the magnetic field is now directed parallel to the plane of the loop. Let's draw a picture in which the magnetic field is directed parallel to the plane of the loop. So the picture would look something like this, and then remember we have that line that passes through the center of the loop, and that will help us determine the angle. Incidentally, this is called the normal line. And again, the angle that we seek is between the magnetic field, which is pointing down in this picture, and then this red normal line. Hopefully we can see, particularly if we extend these magnetic field lines, that the angle between those magnetic field lines and that red colored normal line is actually 90 degrees. So in this case, theta will equal 90 degrees. Now, the magnetic flux, which is being asked for in part B, is equal to the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of the angle. Now, again, the angle is 90 degrees, and what's important to notice is if we plug 90 degrees in for this angle, we can see that the cosine of 90 degrees is actually equal to zero. So we end up with a magnetic flux equaling the field times the area times zero. But of course, that's just actually going to equal zero. So the correct answer is indeed zero. We don't even need to plug in the magnetic field nor the area. And then the unit here will be Tesla meters squared. So this would be the correct answer for part B.